Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. My name is Erica. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make these adorable crochet ball ornaments. So for today's tutorial I'm going to be showing you how to make these ornaments. As you notice they look a little bit different and so I'm going to be showing you a couple different ways to make them and you can choose or mix and match. This first one is, this one is a half double crochet and then this one is a slip stitch which I think looks a lot like knitting. I did one of each just to show you the difference. You can do one of each, a variety for your trees or pick your favorite. Let's go ahead and get started. So supplies for this project are pretty easy. You're just gonna need some yarn and you can use any yarn you like. I'm using this super squishy, chunky yarn. This is actually just Charisma yarn by Loops and Threads. I think I got it at Michael's. On the back of the band, it should tell you information about that yarn. There's washing instructions and then there's also knitting needle and crochet hook sizes. This one's actually asking for a USL and I did use that at first but it was actually too tight in my opinion. So I went up one hook size. So I'm using this bulky five yarn, but I'm actually using a USM slash N, which is a nine millimeter hook. So you might have to just play around with your yarn a little bit just to make sure that whatever size hook you're using is gonna work well. You're also going to need a little pair of scissors and then a yarn needle. I just get this one. This one is from Clover and it's their gold needles. They come in this little blue case and they're perfect for weaving in your ends. And then you're also gonna need some sort of a ball. You can also use just polyfill stuffing if you don't wanna put it around an actual ornament. I'm just gonna put mine around an actual ornament. So I'm gonna show you how to make sure that yours is gonna to fit today um, in today's video. But you can also use this tutorial and just stuff your ornament with some regular um, pillow stuffing, the polyfill pillow stuffing. I got mine at Joann's. There are three of them in here for $12.99 and I used a coupon and these are the 100 millimeter ornament size. So they're kind of the bigger ones. They did have three other sizes. They had really small ones, kind of medium, and then these kind of bigger ones. But you can use any yarn that you like. I'll show you how to make sure that whatever size yarn you have is gonna fit on your ornament ball and then you can just play around with it and have fun. So we're gonna start out by getting some of our yarn and I'm gonna leave a tail about eight inches long. We're gonna use this to cinch up the bottom of our ornament. So you're going to need this for later. So just give yourself a little bit of a tail and then we're going to make a loop right at the end of that for a slip knot, just like that. We're just going to tuck our tail up through that loop and then just pull tight and that's our slip knot. And we can place that slip knot on our hook. So I'm going to go ahead and chain 12 for this cast on edge. Um, you might have to do something different just so that yours fits. So to chain, you just yarn over your hook and I like to hang on to my tail with my thumb and second finger here and then you just pull it through. So that's one. Let's do that a little bit closer. Yarn over, hang on to your tail and just pull it through. Yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through. And I believe that's four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and 12. And each one of these little, let me see if I can straighten it out for you, V shapes is one chain. So right here is one. So I'm gonna count really quick. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, and 12. And then there's just a hoop on my hook. Then we're gonna take our ornament and I'm just going to hold it at the bottom where my knot is and then just bring it up to the top and make sure that that fits along the top. Now keep in mind this is going to stretch a little bit so you can tug it a little bit. If it's loose at all, like if you've got, you know, like anything happening like this, you probably want to take out a few. If it's too tight, you might need to just add a few chains. But basically you want to make sure that your piece is all the way from the bottom to the top of your ornament without too much wiggle room in there because it will stretch. Okay, so 12 is gonna work for me. So I'm gonna go with that. Now you can do a couple different things. The first ornament I showed you was a half double crochet. So I'll show you how to do that first. And, a half, and by the way, these are US terms, so just something to be aware of. Now, as you can see right here, our loop is coming out of this stitch. So we don't wanna go back into this stitch. We wanna go into this next stitch, which is um, next to the one that we're already having our loop come out of, if that makes sense. So I'm gonna go into this next stitch. So to do a half double crochet, you're gonna yarn over, we're gonna go into that next 
stitch. We're going to yarn over again and pull through so you've got three loops. You're going to yarn over and we're just going to pull through all three of those loops. And we're going to do that in each stitch all the way down. So when you do your chain row, I recommend making it a little bit loose so that it's easy for you to get back in with your hook. So now this one is coming out of this stitch right here. You can see it right there. So we're going to go into this next stitch. So yarn over, go into the next stitch, pick up a loop, yarn over and pull through all three. All right. And just keep doing that all the way down. So our next stitch is right here. Pull through all three, yarn over. And you can see which one you came out of because it's kind of just tugging on that stitch a little. So it's pretty easy to find the next one. Okay. So we're going to do it again. Yarn over, go in, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through all three. Yarn over, pick up a loop, yarn over, pull through all three. Yarn over, go into the next stitch, pick up a loop, yarn over, pull through all three. Go into the next one, pick up a loop, pull through all three. We're just doing that all the way down our row of chains. And there's also a little feature on YouTube. You can slow this video down if you need to. So you can see it a little more clearly. Don't forget to go into that very last one where your slip knot is. Okay. Now, because I skipped that first one that my hoop was coming out, I actually will only have 11 stitches moving forward. So here on forward, I should always have 11 stitches in each row. Now that I've made it through my row, I'm going to uh, chain one and I'm going to turn my work. And that just means I'm turning it around so that I can now work my way back down this row. And I'm just going to do the exact same thing. Now, again, I'm coming out of this hoop right here. This chain one is going to give us our extra chain so that as we work our way back across, we'll have 11. Now let's take a closer look here. This V right here is our stitches. So all the way down, we've got V's. And this is the front leg of our V right here. This is the back leg of our V. We're going to be stitching into the back leg of our stitch. Okay. So in each stitch, we're going to do a half double crochet, but we're only doing it in these back legs of our stitches. And that's actually going to be what kind of gives us that ribbing effect. So if you were to go through your whole stitch, like go under the entire both legs, you would have a panel that's just a lot flatter, which is also totally fine, but we're going to do it in the back leg. So again, we're going to yarn over. We're going to go into the back leg of this first stitch, pull up a loop and pull through all three. Yarn over again, go into the back loop, pull up a stitch, pull through all three. Yarn over, go into the back loop, pull up a loop and pull through all three. And we're just going to do that all the way down and make sure that you're getting each stitch as you go. If you skip over, you'll end up having a bit of a hole in your work. So if you see a hole, it's okay. Just rip it back to that point and then, you know, just do it over and make sure you get into each stitch as you go. And again, just the back leg of our stitch. And one thing I think a lot of new uh, crocheters do, or at least this was something I struggled with, with, I always forgot this very last one because depending on how you pull it, you can kind of look like you're done there, but you're not. You still have this one little V left. So make sure you always get into that last stitch and then chain one and then turn your work and then you can repeat. And as you see, we have these little kind of ribbed sections starting to form. So that's how you do the half double crochet and you're going to just keep going until it measures all the way around your ball. I'm going to go ahead and just tear this one out and I'll show you how to do the slip stitch one. And then I'll show you how to finish it off because they're finished off the exact same way. All right. So for the slip stitch one, we're going to do the same thing. I'm still going to chain 12. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 
12. This 12th one is actually going to count as my chain in between the rows. And so I'll technically only have 11 stitches just like before. Now a slip stitch is gonna be just a little bit different. It's gonna give us a tighter weave and it almost looks like um, knit stitches to me actually. So if you like that look, this one might be good for you. I will say that it's a little bit harder to get into these stitches. So if you're new, the half double crochet might be a little bit easier. All right, so as you can see, my loop is coming out of this first stitch right here. So I'm gonna go in to this next one and we're just going into one of those legs. And for a slip stitch, we're actually just going to go in that leg. We're not doing a yarn over or anything. We're gonna yarn over and we're literally gonna pull through both of those loops. Okay, so I've got one loop on. I'm just gonna go into the next stitch, pull up a loop and just keep pulling. So we're just slip stitching. And as you can see already, we've got a tighter weave going on here. So again, just go into the next stitch. When you pull up that loop, you just keep pulling it through. So go in, yarn over and pull through everything. Go into your next stitch, yarn over and pull through everything. And we're just gonna do that all the way down. And I do recommend that you do this a little bit loose because I think the slip stitches are slightly tighter than those half double crochets I just was telling you about. And so they're a little bit harder to get back into when we are going back for our second row and subsequent rows. So just yarn over, pull through. And as you get better at this, you, you'll notice you can just yarn over and kind of pull through all in one fell swoop. You don't have to pull through one at a time, but if you're new and you're struggling, you can pull through one and then grab this next one and pull through two. So I've made it all the way down. I've got my 11 stitches. Same as before, we're just gonna chain one to kind of get us started on this next side and turn our work. And here's our stitches. Again, we're gonna be going into that back leg of our stitch. And as you might notice, these are actually just slightly tighter than my last ones. That's why I think having a little bit of a larger hook helps more on this slip stitch one. They just are a little bit tighter. So we're gonna do the same thing. Our stitch is coming out of this one, so we're gonna go into this one. So again, go into that back leg, yarn over, pull through two back leg, yarn over, pull through two, back leg, yarn over, pull through two, back leg, yarn over, pull through two. And on this one, I do find it's helpful to kind of tilt my fabric forward because this back leg is just kind of hiding on the back side a little bit with these slip stitches. And you saw that one is a little bit tighter to get into. And we're just gonna do that all the way down. Yarn over, pull through two, pull through two, pull through two. And I've only got a couple more here, but I do wanna make sure I'm getting them all. Here's our last one, and this one's that little last one that's kinda of tight, so just make sure you get into that one. You can also go back and just count your stitches. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. We're good. I'm going to chain one turn my work and keep going. So we're just gonna go into the back loop, yarn over, pull through two, go into the back loop, yarn over, pull through two, and I'm just gonna keep going. And again, I'm going to keep going with this method until my piece is wide enough to go all the way around my ornament. You can do any size you want you're just gonna have to customize it to your ornament size. And if you don't have the glass ornaments, you can actually really make it any size you want because you're just gonna stuff it with pillow stuffing when you're done. So it doesn't actually have to fit around anything. So really, really easy. And if you're learning to crochet, this is a great project to learn to crochet on because it's small and it's fast and it doesn't have to like fit anything <laughs> like a head or you know a body. So we're done here with our stitches. We're just going to chain one Again, I'm gonna turn my work. All right, so here we are. I've got about three rows done and we have the whole rest of this ornament to do. So I'm gonna go ahead and get busy through the magic of YouTube. And I'm gonna take this little panel that we started with and replace it with this lovely panel right here. So this panel and this panel are exactly the same. I've just done a lot more rows obviously on this one. So we're gonna set this little 
tester aside. Now yarn is stretchy obviously so I can leave it not stretched or I can pull it and stretch it quite a bit. So this is going to be totally personal preference. You can wrap this around your ball and if you would like to have it not look like it's stretched then obviously I need to do a couple more rows. If I stretch it so that it fits which I can do, then I'm gonna have a little bit more of a ribbed look. And I'm gonna go ahead and do that. But you can just do more rows if you want so it's not stretched and you have like this tighter look on your ornament. I'm gonna call it good. Okay, so now our next thing is to take our panel. And remember, this is the panel that we start out with. So this distance from this edge to this edge is my 12 cast on stitches. And then I think I did about 19 or 20 rows on this. Again, like I said, it's gonna be subjective to how big your ornament is. We have our end down here that has our tail where we very first started, don't cut that yet. And we've got our end where we finished off our last row. So we're just gonna take that and fold it up so those two sides meet. Now to join these together, I'm just gonna be doing a slip stitch down this open edge. And to start it off, I'm just gonna go into this stitch and I'm gonna pick up that loop that was left over from where I stopped. And I'm just gonna pull that through and that kind of joins that end together. And now we can just slip stitch our way down. Now this does get a little finicky and it doesn't have to be perfect. So don't you know worry about it too much. But theoretically, you're gonna take one leg from this stitch and one leg from this one and just join them together. So I'm just gonna go in to this one and I'm picking this one. And then we're just gonna yarn over and I'm just gonna pull through everything. I'm just gonna do that all the way down. So I'm gonna go into this leg and this leg, yarn over and just pull through everything. So go in here, go in here, yarn over and pull through everything. And I'm just doing that all the way down. And I'm just kind of trying to line it up so that I end up at the same place when I'm down here. And theoretically there should be the same amount of stitches on both of these, so it shouldn't really matter. If for some reason you got off on a stitch, just skip one, don't worry about it, and keep going. You're never gonna notice on these ornaments. Okay, so I'm just gonna keep going all the way down, picking up one stitch on each side. We're down to our last one. I'm just gonna pick one up there, one there, and just pull it through, okay? Now that we're done, you can take a look and just make sure it looks okay and everything's even. It's not really gonna matter by the time we cinch this up, so don't worry about it too much. You just need to have them joined. And now we're going to yarn over and pull through a huge loop and leave yourself a tail and we're gonna just clip off our yarn. And we're just gonna pull that through and just kind of tighten it up right there. So now, We've got a tube that looks just like this with a tail on one side and a tail on the other side. Now, the first thing we're gonna do is just pick one of our ends. It doesn't matter which end at this point. And we're going to weave our tail through these outside stitches to cinch it up. So I'm gonna go in one, out the other, in one. I'm just kind of weaving and I'm just picking stitches. Like it really doesn't matter. Just eyeball it as you go through one here, one there and I'm just kind of weaving in and out. And again, this doesn't have to be perfect, so don't stress out if you're not finding the same stitches that I'm finding. You'll never notice when we go to tighten this up. And you're gonna go all the way around, back to the front where we started. And I just kind of pulled to figure out where we started, but here's our, you can tell because here's this and our seam. So now we can just take this and just carefully pull until it's nice and tight. And then I usually like to go back through and just run it through a couple more stitches like this and just tighten it even a little bit more. A little bit more. And this bottom end you're gonna want super tight so you can tighten as tight as you can. Just don't uh, break your yarn, that would be bad. Not the end of the world because you could get a new piece of yarn to finish cinching it, but it's just easier this way. Okay, now I have that tail. I'm actually gonna stick it through to the inside. Okay, and I'm gonna flip my piece inside out and just pull my tail in. 
And then now I'm just going to tie it off so I can just grab some stitches and just run a knot in here just to tie it. So I'll make a loop and then go through that loop and just tighten it and maybe go this way and do it again. Really all you're doing is giving yourself a little knot so it doesn't come undone. And now we can just trim this off. You don't have to trim it off super close or anything. Just trim it like that. It's going to be inside your ball so you're never even going to see that. So now we can turn it back around and just look at our work. We've got a nice closed edge. Now we're going to grab our ball and we're going to go ahead and just tuck it right in there and just hope it fits. <laughs> hope it fits. And now we're going to do the same thing on this top, but we obviously want to leave this top open just slightly because we've got to get our little topper on. So I'm going to basically do the exact same thing. I'm just going to pull it tight around this topper instead of pulling it all the way closed. So again, I'm just going to start weaving my yarn through these stitches back and forth all the way around my top edge. And sometimes it's kind of hard to tell where you started. So I just go and even if you overlap it a little bit, that's okay. All right. So here we are and I just try and kind of center it. So it's centered on my ball and then I'm going to go ahead and give that a tug. Oops, too much <laughs> and just tighten it right around that opening just like that so that you've got your ball opening sticking out. And then once it's tight, I will just go through, run it through a few more times, kind of like the other one, just to give it a little bit more security around there. Just like that. And then when I feel pretty good about how stable it is, I'm just going to hang on to it. I'm going to come back around here, make my loop like before, just make a loop like that and just tie that off in a knot. And I'll probably do that, you know, one more time or so just to make sure it's secure. And then for this end, I actually am going to use kind of a quilter's trick. I'm going to just pop my hook out somewhere over here so that I can pull that yarn through, snip it off, and then you can kind of just tuck that in and then you've got your tail tucked nice and tight inside there. It's not going to come out. And then we can add our topping, a little topper back onto our ball. Voila. And here's our finished ornament. So really, really cute. So we've got this one that's the little bit tighter. This one is the slip stitch one. And then this one is the half double crochet one. And like I said, I put these around glass balls, but you could also just stuff them with polyfill stuffing. And then instead, because you're not going to have this little top on here, just use that extra piece of yarn, tighten it all the way tight, just like you did on this end, and then give yourself a string you know, a hanger, use your yarn as a hanger and just tie it off right down here. And then you'll have a little hanger for your ball. And then the only other thing that I'm going to add are some ribbons and I'm going to go ahead and just put a little ribbon through here and I'll use this as my hanger for my tree. So we'll just trim that off and then you can just tie it in a little knot just like this at the top. And then you've got a cute little hanger for your tree. And if you um, are not sure, what color you want to decorate with every year. I suggest doing a neutral color in this, and then you could change out this little ribbon every year so that it matches your holiday decor. My tree out in my living room is actually white, so I think I'll probably use something like this or some jute twine would be perfect. I need to go see if I have any of that for my hanger so that it matches my decor. So just another little fun idea. You could also add a little bow on top or even some greenery to make it extra cute. That's going to be it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please make sure to thumbs up and subscribe. You can also hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on any upcoming fun. And stay tuned. I have a lot more fun holiday content coming your way. Thanks so much for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed it and I will see you next time. We're going to cast on 12 stitches in my cast on here. And these are called chains, by the way. Oh, I said cast on. I'm a knitter. Let's do that again. Liv, you can do a variety or pick your favorite. Stop. <laughs> so do a half cup. So do do. But you could also just stuff them. Ah.